Hello, I'm Thomas, and if I say I'm German, I tell just half the truth, because I grew up and I was raised in East Germany. I would say, at the first look, the life in East Germany wasn't so much different than any country in the world, but on the other hand, the observation that there was something slightly different it starts very early, earlier even, a child would realize, because a child is basically just interested to eat, to play and whatsoever. But when in your surrounding things are happening, which you cannot explain step by step, you start talk, uh, thinking about that. And here we are. Uh, one thing people from Western countries cannot imagine at all is the, the space between the lines, the, the, the words between the words, in sense of all the things which are better not to mention or why you're afraid you might be controlled. All those things start very, very early, but as I said before, long time before you realize that. Like all the boys all over the world, if they get their little motorcycle, what they do is they play a little bit around things which are not 100% legal. And what happened is the East German police would catch you, announce that they take away your driver license and things like this. But actually, then they put you under pressure to, for example, spy around friends of yours, saying what they say and, you know, and getting information about things they couldn't find in the first uh, line. And since mostly never ever happened something right after this, people got somehow the trust that when they tell the things about other people, it is not dangerous. So on the end, uh, you were under control, but you, you couldn't see really the danger. The danger came up at a later moment where you were planning to make some career or something like this and then they pulled out all the things which went wrong in the past. The division of the two parts of Germany happened when I was a teenager and actually I haven't realized really the dimension of these things which happened. I remember I was sitting in a tram in a streetcar in the city of Dessau and somebody said they closed the borderline. Because before this it was possible to go from the east to the west even if it was not really honored when you do things like this. And uh, the thing was, it was not just a separation of some territories, it was a separation of families. It was a separation of existing structures, companies which had maybe places in both sides of Germany. Suddenly they couldn't operate the two of them anymore. Or families where, for example, a lot of parents went to West Germany because they saw more opportunities there and left the kids with the grandparents with the intention we pick them up later and we as soon as we have an apartment as soon as we have a work we we bring them back but suddenly the world was there and the kids remained without parents and uh, so these kind of things were quite present at this period of the time but again when you're young you don't really realize the, the full impact. A funny situation, which you cannot find in too many countries around the world, was the fact that both sides shared the same language. But not only the language, in two-thirds of the East German territory, it was able to watch West German TV, after all, to listen to West German radio station. 
That means there was quite a good flow of information and we were not, as we call that, growing up in the Valley of the Silence, that was the southern, south, southeast part of East Germany, where they couldn't receive all that because they've never he heard any message from, from the West. For example, a, one, a very funny situation was, at a certain pro moment of my life, I got some presents because I was 14, 15, whatever, and uh, I got the money and I went in the, in the forest because that was the Russian army and they always uh, searched the possibility to get money, local money, to buy drinks. So we went to there, we brought a bottle of vodka and I don't know what amount of money and I bought a Russian transistor radio. And the funny thing is I used that Soviet transistor radio to listen the enemy's uh, messages from the West. And somehow a very significant moment was I went to my first, let's call it vacation with a girl with a tent and I brought that radio and I was listening the the moment, the landing of the moon. So on the Soviet radio, uh, landing with the American enemies on the moon. The, the limitation started quite early. For example, the kids were asked in school what kind of uh, evening program they're watching on TV so they could realize the parents are watching West German TV and so in the register there was somehow a sign or some other ones which went to, to church which was not forbidden but it was not well seen so another note in the register so from the beginning on you were controlled and limited this happened later on more drastically for example when I was about uh, to go to university uh, it was refused because I had not the right socialistic personal development. They were right, I'm still not a socialist, I'm not any kind of ist. But for me it was clear that gate would be closed forever. Now, after several uh, decades that the, the, the wall, as the international people call it, fell down. Looking backwards, I would say there was nothing we could have made better. The only thing what happened nowadays is all the story get lost. It is not just that we lost years in prison, that we lost some years in East Germany, not being able to make things like this. Nowadays, the things are basically forgotten because most young people, even in Germany, don't know anything about it. And now I understand the, the history after the war and a lot of people all over the world were really concerned about the things which happened in time of fascism and whatsoever. Now, short time after it was forgotten and nobody could recall anymore. Now I'm in the same situation that I have to say not only a lot of time was stolen from me and others in my situation, no, now the history steals even the memory.